my name is Ava. I am the host of the Avocado Knits podcast, <clears throat> a podcast about knitting, spinning, hand dyeing yarn, and soon sewing. Yup. Um, this is episode seven. And last episode, I finally decided to post something about it on my Instagram, and I got a couple new subscribers. I don't have a lot of followers on Instagram because I don't really put myself out there and I don't really post a lot, but it was nice that some people who follow me on Instagram decided to subscribe to the podcast. That made me super happy. So, that's awesome. Um, I guess we should go straight into finished objects. There are none. I have finished nothing. (laughs) Um, there's been a lot of, like, as the knit more girls would call it, knitting attacks that have really slowed down my progress. Not to mention the fact that I turned in my last exam on Friday Um, so last week was exam week and the week before was like scrambling to get projects done before exam week. So (laughs) it's been wild. Um, but now I have a couple weeks off before I go back to school for May master and summer session. I guess now I should show you some whips spoiler alert they're the exact same whips from last episode let's start with the tale of woe oh goodness this is in my beauty and the beast bag that i made i'm being super careful here um so this is my lamina wrap by amba o'brien I think I've only done like two new colors since I last podcasted. And the reason for that is, oh, this is getting long. Actually, I'll tell you the reason after I tell you what the yarn is. The yarn is um, from my Giddy Yarns advent calendar from 2018. Um, I will go through what all the colorways are called when this is finished, but super pretty um oh and the white in between everything is um nitpicks stroll undyed so my tail of woe i had all my little mini i'll show you one this is the one i'm currently working off of little mini ball of yarn um actually i'll tell the whole story so when i was first setting up to knit this i had just gotten my new ball winder and i was like I'm gonna wind all these minis but this shaft on my ball winder is super thick and because the mini skeins are only 10 grams there was no like weight to them so the middle was just like hollow and then so they got all tangled (laughs) so then I was like okay I guess I have to hand wind these into balls and I did that and that worked for a while but over time they just got super tangled every single one of them all 24 minis so the past couple of days no we spent me and my boyfriend spent a good three days of like watching lost or movies or whatever untangling these mini skeins so that was like time taken away from all my projects (laughs) i'm gonna be more careful And when I see that things are starting to get tangled, I won't let that happen. I also only have, like, not that many minis left to work with. So, and I took out all the ones that I worked on and put them in a little baggie. So hopefully that will make things a bit better when inside the bag. Hopefully. yeah that's that it's still super fun I'm still really enjoying it but that mishap was a little frustrating (laughs) what next okay so in my 
sheep ball bag. I have my um, Sunset Raglan tee, which is by Lion Brand Yarns. It's a free pattern. So I finished the back. I don't know if I had finished the back last time yet, but the back is finished and I blocked it, but I'm going to have to re-block it before I seam it. But I was mainly blocking it to see what happened on the bottom. It does roll up, but I decided I don't care. So the front is going to be the same on the bottom. And this is how far I've gotten on the front. So I'm like halfway through before I separate for the sleeves. So that's cool. I've decided that if I don't finish this before June, I'm going to knit monogamously on it in June until I finish it because the whole point was to have it for the summer and I'm also sick of it. <laughs> I want the finished object. I'm just sick of working on it. I'm, I'm really dreading seaming it because I've never seamed a knit garment, but I'm sure it'll be fine. There's a bajillion tutorials. It can't be that hard. It can't. I'm just really worried and stressed that it won't like line up. That's okay. Sorry, I just adjusted my camera because I decided it was too far up. And now you can see my sweater. I'm wearing my Nordiska by Caitlin Hunter, which I love so much. My next whip. I have two whips in this bag. First I'll show this one. So this is my Hopcot cowl by Chrissy Graham. And it's sort of a bandana shape. So it's like a bit longer at the end. And then eventually you join in the round. And I just joined in the round. I think I'll be finished with this if I just work on it for like one more day. And I'm super excited because it's so soft. The yarn I'm using is Plymouth Yarns Baby Alpaca Worsted Collage in the taupe colorway. And I think it'll be a super nice neutral cowl that'll go with lots of stuff. And I'm super excited about it. Um, I have a few stitch markers on it for the sake of marking where things are happening in the pattern. I know most people just like to use the round ones for this, but I like having the little charms. Um, this snowflake came from a yarn club I did with Dinah's House of Craft. This rose came with a skein that I purchased from Down Sheepy Lane. Um, and this little sheep here I purchased from Miss Babs booth at SSK. I did not attend SSK, but I went to the marketplace in 2018 and I love, I have like eight, I don't know if I have four or eight of these, but I love them. They're, I have some pink sheep and some black sheep and I love them. Um, so yeah. I feel like this would have been finished if I didn't have so many mishaps with my other projects. Oh my goodness. And next is another project where I had major mishaps. So first I'll show you where I am currently. So I'm, these are some socks that I'm making. And um, this yarn is Knit Picks Stroll Hand Painted in the Borealis colorway. And it's super cool. And I, last time I had talked about how I wanted to enter it in Amy Florence's Rose City Rollers Cal, but I realized that I couldn't do that because I started to up and Rose City Rollers are bottom down, which is a bummer. But I'm still, they're still shorty socks. This is the first sock. So I decided to try my hand at a fish kiss lips, fish lips kiss, yes, fish lips kiss heel um, by Socks Therapist, and I really like this heel. 
I really like how it looks and I really like, I liked knitting it. It took me a second to figure out what was going on, but it was fine. The mishap with this, so I finished this sock while I was in a lecture at school and I didn't, I never made shorty socks before, so I didn't know how long to make them and I just kind of like held it up to my foot and was like, hmm, that looks short. And then I tried to put it on and I had a stretchy bind off on it, but then the bind off just like completely broke. So you see all those loose stitches and I only have one pair of sock needles, so I can't fix it until I finish my other socks. That's not true. I could just put my other socks on waist yarn, but I'm not all that concerned. I, yeah, I think I just need to make the stockinette after the heel longer and then, yeah. I want, I'm doing ribbing instead of like a rolled cuff because I like how that looks better. So maybe the Rose City rollers just weren't meant to be because I don't like heel flaps and gussets and I don't like rolled hems but I wanted to like participate in making teeny tiny socks for the summer even though it's probably too warm anyway but these will be nice when I want to wear converse on those like in between seasons but I want wool socks but yeah and this these socks definitely won't take up all the skein probably take up less than 50 grams because I have tiny ish feet and my stitch count that I use is only 56 stitches um but I'm planning on using the rest of the skein to make my stepmom some socks because this is kind of her color palette my boyfriend also wanted socks out of this but I don't have enough yarn to make socks for both him and me so yeah tales of woe it's okay. Everything's great. So, in the midst of um, life and complications, I did not have time to do any spinning. So, wah, wah, no spinning to share. But I did do some dyeing. And I actually talked about this last week, but it wasn't dry yet. So, yeah. Um, so I dyed two skeins of yarn using Easter egg dyes. So this is the first skein and how I kind of did it, it was very just like out of the blue. So I, s I'll actually show you both skeins. Here you go. This one's a fingering weight. This one's a worsted. I think this one's 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon and this one is just 100% Superwash Merino. So there was like a rainbow of colors and I decided in this one I would have yellow, like orange to green in the rainbow and this one I would have blue to red in the rainbow. And I was a little skeptical about combining the orange and green but I actually think it turned out awesome. It made this like amazing gold mustardy yellow and it's not showing up nearly as vibrant as it is, but it's like super bright and super saturated and I think it looks amazing and I cannot wait to make socks out of this. This will definitely be, so I just like threw the dyes in, sorry, I just threw the dyes in and didn't really pay attention to where they were going. So this will probably be like sort of a spiral pooling colorway. I don't know though, we'll see. Oh, and then this little orange bit, that's cool. And some little green. Anyway, I'm super pleased with this. And then I also really like this one. It's a lot more pastel-y than I thought it would be, but I don't mind that. Also, the red came out more like a pink. Like, I think this is the part that's supposed to be red. That's okay. I really like sort of this part where it's like blue and purple and pale pink, which it's not showing up on screen, but it's super cool. So yeah, that was really fun. It made me want to do some more dyeing. Of course, I haven't because exams. But it will happen everything will be great oh yes another thing i wanted to talk about so 
one day I was looking in my stash and I was like, oh my goodness. I have, so for Christmas, my stepmom and my dad got, so they don't know a lot about yarn and like where to buy yarn. Like they don't know what any of the yarn stores in Atlanta are or where they are or what's going on. Um, so they wanted to buy me yarn because they knew that I was like obsessed with knitting. So they went to the craft store, which, you know, that's fine. Like for some people, acrylic and stuff is great, but it actually really irritates my skin. Like my reasons for not using acrylic are not like, ooh, it's bad and synthetic. I understand that for some people that's just like their budget. For me, I I actually did crochet and knit a lot of stuff with acrylic when I was first starting and I would like go out and wear the stuff that I made and my skin just like flared up. I don't know why. It might have just been the kind of acrylic I was using, but I was using that sort of super soft stuff. So I don't really know. Um, doesn't happen with wool. I don't know. Um, anyway, so while they did not know that the craft store is not the best place to buy natural fibers, they did know that I only like knitting with natural fibers. So they gave me like two skeins of every color in the one like natural fiber that they had which was Patton's wool uh, classic wool worsted which is 100% wool and they didn't give me every color that exists they just gave me every color that that particular Michaels had I was like looking and I kept it because there's nothing wrong with it and I could definitely make something out of it but I would in my opinion I would consider it kind of like a sweater yarn. Like, it kind of reminds me of, like, Cascade or Knit Picks or, you know, those those kinds of, like, workhorse yarns. Um, but because I had two of every color, I wouldn't be able to get a sweater out of it unless I did some, like, color blocking. Um, but I was, like, sort of sitting around one day... And I got what I believe to be a genius idea. So I got this vision in my head of this like color blocked striped like pinafore tunic type thing and with like a cowl neck. And I was like, there's got to be a, a, a pattern like that on Ravelry. And there is. It is called... Frontenac by Julie Hoover um which it doesn't do the striping but that's like the easiest thing to change in a pattern um however I don't know the more I thought about it I was like "Mm, do I want the cowl neck so I haven't decided on that yet but I have decided what colors I'm gonna use and I'm gonna wear it with leggings, with like a sh- long sleeve shirt underneath, and it'll be super cute. And it'll be like a dress. Um, so I'm gonna use this burgundy, this gray, which is looking blue, but it's gray, and then this marled gray, and I'm gonna stripe them, and it's gonna be amazing. So I'm super excited about that. And it means one less sweater quantity that I need to purchase because it's already in my stash. And I think that that's super awesome. So, yeah, super excited. Um, I also, I purchased some sewing stuff, which is also really exciting. I have not gotten it in the mail yet, but I have two projects in mind. The first one, so I found, I think it's on fabric.com on their blog. I found like a free tutorial on how to just make like an elastic waistband skirt. So I, based on that pattern, I got some fabric 
and I'll show it to you when it arrives, but it's this cotton and steel fabric and it's like gray-ish, bluish with like little white cross or X's on it. And I just think it'll be like a cute sort of neutral-ish skirt that I can wear and I think it'll work well for both the summer and the winter like during the summer you know with sandals and a t-shirt and during the winter with like a long sleeve shirt and cardigan and black tights so I think it'll be super versatile and I'm super excited and then the other thing that I got stuff to make um so I have to sing in this concert later this month and our dress code I don't understand the dress code um we have to wear white which I've never had to wear for a concert in my life like pretty much every concert you either if you're if you're in a choir you usually have like a uniform or it's like all black like concert black or if you're like singing a recital or whatever you pick out a fancy dress but this, this concert, they were like, oh, it's in the spring. We should wear all white. And then they specified that it has to be white. Like, it can't be, like, off-white or cream or whatever. It has to be white because if everyone's wearing, like, different shades of off-white, it'll clash. And what I don't understand... So, when I was, like, in elementary school, we would have a few concerts. Like, for our spring concert, we could just wear, like, Sunday's Best. Like, wear, like, a floral dress or something and I don't understand why we didn't just do that but you know I didn't choose the dress code and that's fine but um I went out shopping and I could not find a single white dress that was even vaguely wearable they were either the wrong size or they were not white they were off white because nobody wears white uh, clearly have some issues around this issue or they were like like the neckline was like up to here and it was like straight down and that just doesn't look good with my body because I'm like the shape my body shape is like kind of curvy so if I have something with a super long neckline it makes it look like I'm or a super high neckline it makes it look like everything is droopy um and when things are straight down like my body doesn't go straight down (laughs) And then, or it would be, like, something with, like, super, like, flared sleeves, like, 70s style, like, long flared sleeves. And I was like, that's not going to work. Or, like, it would be, like, super lacy, which I don't have a problem with. I like lace. But it would be, like, very big lace, which is, like, not, I like, I don't know, not my jam. (sighs) literally all the dresses looked exactly the same they were either they're one of the two styles I just described in lace and I don't know why I went to three different stores (laughs) one of them didn't have a single white dress not even off-white they didn't just know it was Target like I feel like Target is like where you go if you just want a basic thing and it was not there and And then I went to, like, some consignment stores, and they just all had the same stuff. So I was just, like, I was looking at fabric, and then I saw some solid white on fabric.com. And I was like, you know what? Well, I just make this dress. Um, So I looked up some easy dress patterns. And, um, unfortunately, you don't really get, if it's a paid for pattern, you obviously don't get to see the pattern to see what you have to do, which is a struggle for me because, I don't know, certain tasks look intimidating and then you're like, ah. Um, but I found one on Blueprint that, um, or previously called Craftsy, that um, it was set. It said it was for beginners, and um, it was like a kimono dress, like a short sleeve kimono dress. I will send you a link because I don't remember, or I 
don't know how to put a little photo here. I could probably figure it out, but I'm... <sighs> yeah, I'll send you a link. It's like a short sleep kimono dress. And it's not the sort of style that I usually go for, but I envision it being super easy to make be if it's if it's done the way I think it is. I don't think it's a style that'll look bad on me. It's just not something I've worn before and I might find that I super duper love it. Oh, and it has like a little elastic waistband, which I love because anything that makes my waist look tiny is great. I'm really excited about that. I think that'll be great. Hopefully it's super easy and hopefully all my materials get here on time because four to seven day shipping, the concert's on May 18th. It says the latest that you get here is May 15th. So that gives me like three days to sort it out. So I think that should be fine. Um, and one of those days is a Saturday, so I won't be doing anything. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I think what I'm going to, it's a PDF pattern. So I think I'm actually going to print out the pattern today and tape all the pieces together and all that stuff. I won't have the fabric, but I feel like that's going to take a really long time based on what people have told me. I kind of wish it wasn't a PDF pattern. Like, I wish I could have just ordered a pattern, but I don't know. I've, I've never worked from a pattern, so I'm interested to see how this goes. I also think it was sort of a bold endeavor to, like, make a dress, like, one of my first things that I make. I mean, it's easier than pants, I imagine, but like, I feel like I should have made a couple, a couple skirts before I moved on to a dress, but I'm sure it'll be fine. <sighs> I think that's it as far as like crafting content. I already told you about my real life stuff, like exams and things like that. A couple days ago, uh, my boyfriend took me on a date to this place. It was called Other World. And it was like this sort of technological arts exhibit type thing where um, the word I'm looking for is not context. The concept of it is that you're doing like a dream sequence and it's like all this interactive stuff where you like touch it and things happen. And like there was like this one room where there was like a bunch of clouds and if you touched different clouds on the wall, it would do different weather and it was cool. And there was like a chair where you are looking up and you have a little joystick and buttons and you can like move around in space. It was really cool. And then at the end, if you did a puzzle, it wasn't really a puzzle. It was, it was something you could get into this secret room and in the room, it was like gaming through the ages. So they had an Atari, a Super Nintendo, SNES, or it was a Nintendo 64. I forget which one, but it had Super Mario on it. Um, and then they had a Wii and a PS2 or maybe the original PlayStation. I don't know. And then something else. I don't know. And they all had games on them and you could play them and it was cool. And they had a VR headset Mine never worked, and I didn't feel like complaining, so I just didn't get to do it. But my boyfriend worked, and he said it was really cool. Um, so that was fun. That's the only, like, big, exciting thing that happened. As far as, like, what I'm watching on TV and listening to and stuff, I'm still on the same stuff. We're still watching Lost. Um, I'm still reading the same books because I read super slowly because I'm always busy and I usually put knitting before reading when I have to pick between two activities. I, last night, so I don't like superhero movies. Controversial opinion. Everyone's like, every time I tell people that, they're like, what? You don't like superhero movies? They're the coolest. I don't know. They, people get so offended when I say that. I just don't like action movies, okay? Right. Because I think they're boring. Because it's just like action sequence after action sequence. And I like characterization and interaction and like 
just like getting to know people and seeing how they do things together. I don't know. I, and I'm also, I don't know. I just feel like the action sequences get repetitive and there's no part of me that's like, wow, it's so cool. That guy did a little flip and the car exploded. Like, I don't, I don't feel that. I don't get it. I don't understand. Like, I get that there's like special effects and that's cool. I just, I don't know. I just don't get it. Um, but my boyfriend went to see Avengers End Game, whatever the one that just came out is. I've, I've never seen any of the Avengers movies, except I've seen all the Iron Man movies because I like the sort of technology part of it. And Robert Downey Jr. was... I sort of had a little childhood crush on him. I think the first movie came out when I was like 10. (sighs) Maybe younger or older. I don't know. That's what I remember. So I did watch those. I liked them at the time. In retrospect, I probably wouldn't like them if I saw them now. But anyway, those are the only Marvel movies I've seen. Um, But my boyfriend last night was like, you have to watch... you have to watch marvel movies so that we can see avengers endgame and i was like i don't want to i hate this but he made me watch guardians of the galaxy and it was pretty good it was funny um i like the characters there were too many action scenes that's my only complaint too many i also think the pacing of the plot was just like too fast it was like a thing is happening, then the thing is happening, then the thing is happening. There was like no downtime except for that one scene where the raccoon got drunk. <sighs> I don't know. I, I, but what I do appreciate, I'm sorry, I'm just grabbing all my yarn. What I do appreciate is that apparently a lot of those movies are like three hours long. And I think Guardians of the Galaxy was like less than two hours long. And I think that that's why the pacing was like, this 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 because they were trying to make it a bit shorter maybe they'd gotten complaints that they were too long i don't know groot is cool he's groot that's he was funny um i didn't really buy the romance between peter and the green lady i didn't buy it i was just like they had like first they start off with like zero anything and then they have that one scene where they're listening to music and then they kiss and it's just like or almost kiss I forget um and then it's suddenly like oh wow they like each other and then Peter wants to save her but I feel like they didn't get to know each other enough to like really develop that and it also it was like the whole thing was like we're friends and friendship is great but I feel like the only thing binding these characters together was that they were in a tough situation together and I don't think that's enough to make a friendship I think you need more than that you need bonding over something that isn't just shared misery of being in prison and then escaping and blah 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 but I don't know I just I'm not a movie person I don't think that there's enough time to like really get a full picture of what's going on and who these people are I like ser- like movies that are in a series better, like, you know, like Harry Potter um, or Star Wars. See, I don't like action movies, but I'm a nerd, so I feel like I have to watch Star Wars, and I like parts of it, like the parts that aren't action and where people have conversations and get closer to each other. I didn't like the most recent Star Wars movie. Like, I felt like it was just, like, filler, like episode seven was just like Hua. and then episode nine whenever that comes out it's gonna be like Hua. and then episode eight was just like the bridge and I was not about that like I was like nothing important happened here it was just a bunch of people making mistakes and being stupid <laughs> I don't know like I feel like a whole hour could have been cut from that movie if like I forget who was involved in it. Maybe Poe and Flynn and Flynn's love interest. I, if I, it's been a year since I've seen this or whenever it was out in theaters, that's when I saw it. But I feel like a whole hour could have been cut if they just like trusted in 
whoever the leader was with the purple hair and were not like trying to like fix everything because like they had it under control and they did not need to help and risk people's lives but then they did and they made things worse so that was just annoying to me because i was like stop i get that feeling a lot in lost where like people are trying to do things that they think are important and then i feel like they're not going to be important and i'm just like stop just calm down or when people like get mad at each other for no reason and they're just super wishy-washy kate this just became a whole tangent about film and television i'm gonna end the episode here because i'm i've gone way far off of knitting content i hope you enjoyed we i will probably be back in like two weeks and it will be great. Um, okay. Bye-bye.